in the last two books, I did not like the parts where Hannah has arguments with herself. She says something, then her suspicious mind criticizes her thought. Then her rational mind criticizes that thought. Then her suspicious mind returns with a counter-argument. I found these segments to be annoying and strange. She acts like she's three different people. And then she always ignores what her two minds say, so what was the point of that? Well, I'm sorry to say this book ramps up the mental gymnastics. Hannah's two extra minds argue with each other at least a dozen times. It's easily the worst thing about this book. Argofon book review, Argofon book review. Hannah visits the mayor's secretary. She arrives when her sister Andrea is arguing with Mayor Bascombe. Hannah and the secretary give running commentary, like, Andrea's getting mad! If the mayor doesn't stop, she's going to hit him! This goes on for a few pages. They really should have interrupted the fight instead of letting it escalate. When Andrea snaps, they get up to protect, not the mayor, the cookies. Because priorities. Andrea slaps the mayor so hard, his chair is broken. She storms out of the building in a fury. Andrea's mad because the mayor plans to fire her husband for arresting his nephew, Bruce. Stephanie, the mayor's wife, is drinking champagne with Mother in the middle of the afternoon. She seems happy to hear Andrea attacked her husband. That night, Hannah and her sisters have dinner with their parents. Hannah made three triple chocolate cheesecakes, which is nine separate cheesecakes for a dinner with five people. Dinner is interrupted by Andrea. She loved Hannah's cheesecake so much, she decided to give some to the mayor as a peace offering, only she found him murdered in his office. She was so upset that she... She... She dropped the cheesecake! No, not the cheesecake! Doesn't she know they only have eight backup cheesecakes? Andrea apologizes for dropping the cheesecake several times. Hannah thinks she is overreacting. If Andrea will never eat cheesecake again, just because she dropped one in a pool of blood. Number one, that is super gross. I would never eat cheesecake again. Number two, Hannah, you are not one to criticize Andrea because you still have not moved back into your condo after somebody died there three books ago. Speaking of which, there is no mention of Ross's mystery in this book. At this point, I am pretty sure we will never learn who Ross's real wife is. Doc asks Hannah to hide the cheesecake from Mike, because Mike will eat the entire thing if given a chance. We're told Hannah hides the cheesecake in the vegetable drawer. In a continuity error, Hannah later explains she hid the cheesecake by disguising it as liver. She jokes that Mike would stop eating pâté if he knew Brauschweiger's a kind of liverwurst. <laughs> I'm not sure Mike is cultured enough to know what any of those things are. The police question Andrea, Doc writes an autopsy report, and Hannah goes home with Norman. Apparently Norman was at the family dinner the whole time. He just didn't say anything for 40 pages. So I didn't know he was there. Hannah is still living at Norman's house because her cat refuses to go back to the condo and she can't contradict her cat. Norman continues to be the perfect guy. He's nice to her cat and enjoys cooking food for her. What else could Hannah want? Hannah makes a long list of suspects. There are the mayor's wife and everyone related to her his secret girlfriends and everyone related to them, and his political rivals that don't get mentioned outside of this page of the book. This book takes place during Easter time, which has nothing to do with the story. It's just an excuse to make a bunch of Easter-themed goods. Andrea makes an Easter version of her whippersnapper cookies. I haven't mentioned them in my reviews before. Whippersnappers are Andrea's long-running specialty, this is the 13th book of the series to contain a whippersnapper recipe. They appear to be the same basic recipe. You combine cake mix with Cool Whip and any extras that match the cake flavor. 
The only real difference that I can see is the kind of cake mix that you use. I know Andrea is a bad chef, but it seems lazy to reuse the same basic recipe in 15 different books. Andrea seems determined to become a better chef. She begs Hannah to give her cooking jobs. Hannah struggles to think of something so easy, even Andrea couldn't mess it up. Andrea is overjoyed when Hannah agrees to let her pour cupcake batter into cupcake papers. I could do it, Hannah! I know I could! Would you like me to? That's what Andrea says. It's pretty childish for a woman who's in her 30s. But I have to say, it's less annoying than Hannah's two brains arguing about Andrea. Stephanie and Mother have another afternoon champagne party. I think they have a drinking problem. Stephanie builds up her sister as a major suspect, which gets the Best Drop Subplot Award because her sister never appears, and Hannah doesn't look into her. Hannah leaves all the alibi and suspect questioning to the police. She seems to know, without being told, that the vital clue happened during the mayor's college days, so she zeroes in on that. Lisa's husband was at City Hall around the time of the murder. When he left the building, he saw an empty spot in the snow, left by the culprit's car. It's a big car that leaked brown liquid. Norman knows all about car liquids, thanks to the time he spent as a race car driver. Wait, what? Norman was a race car driver? When did this happen? Norman is so boring, he thinks putting ketchup and mayonnaise on meatloaf is an adventure. I can't believe he used to be a race car driver. Hannah gets the mayor's college yearbook. It has a photo of him at a party with a drunk girl. Because of course the college put drunk photos in their yearbook. The drunk girl looks a lot like his brother's wife. His brother Robert is in town right now. He's got a very detailed alibi. He was at a truck stop that has a waitress named Mitzi who's dating his car mechanic across from a vacant motel by the airport, which you can only reach from a specific direction. Additionally, we're told that the mayor spoils Robert's son, Bruce. Stephanie says it's a good thing they didn't have kids, because the mayor would have spoiled them just as bad. That's kind of a lot of information. And the next chapter, Hannah repeats this conversation line by line, which is a giveaway that this is the mystery solution. Mitzi the waitress confirms Robert's probably the culprit. He has a large car that leaked fluid, and he lied about what direction he came from, to hide the fact he visited the mayor on the night of the murder. Hannah visits Robert. It turns out the yearbook photo showed the mayor shortly after he drugged his older brother's girlfriend, and shortly before he did something even worse to her. The mayor is secretly Bruce's father. Robert and the mayor fought over the best way to handle Bruce's arrest. The mayor tried to kill his brother Robert, who stole the gun and used it as a bludgeon. The fingerprints on the gun confirm that Robert's telling the truth, and the district attorney decides not to press any charges against this mayor murderer. Stephanie is picked as the interim mayor. I hope she gives up her daily champagne lunch parties when she's working. The end. Post-book follow-up. I thought this book would be more exciting than it is, because the victim is Mayor Bascombe! He's been a major character of the series for a long time. His death should be a big deal. And yet, it's not at all treated differently from the books where the victim's a new character who's never appeared before. The book solidly puts the focus on Hannah's food and friends instead of the mystery. Once again, you can skim through the mystery investigation because the important information doesn't come up until the final 20 pages. The investigation was better and more interesting than the last few books, but it would have been improved if Bruce or Robert had appeared before the end. I understand the author doesn't want to spoil the surprise ending, but I figured it out pretty easily that the culprit with the malfunctioning car was the one character whose car was being repaired. If the series wants to continue killing major characters, 
I recommend Mike as the next victim. He has not contributed to the series in a while. Lonnie or Bill could easily take over the role of the guy who arrests the culprit at the end. Mike no longer has romantic moments with Hannah. Without him acting like a viable love interest, there's nothing to him but food jokes. He's a jerk who forces Hannah to make three times as much food for every meal so he can eat a full portion by himself and take a second full portion as the leftovers. Why can't Mike get his own food for once? Here's something I don't remember from previous books. Hannah and her employees always print out the list of ingredients and checkmark every one when making a recipe. They act like this is a great idea which prevents mistakes, but it seems like all it does is waste paper. Overall, it's better than the series has offered lately, but it's still pretty far off from what the series provided in its heyday. Half the book could be removed, especially the parts with food and Hannah's dueling minds. I'm encouraged that Hannah did not spend at least three chapters in restaurants, which she has done for many books in a row. Maybe that signals a turn away from recipes and back towards mystery stories. I give Hannah Swenson number 27, Triple Chocolate Cheesecake Murder, a 3 out of 10.